Hello, I'm Dr. Greg Chernoff, and I'd like to, to welcome you to my office. Uh, I understand that you are interested in rejuvenating the upper third uh, of your face. With gravitational descent, our forehead muscles weaken. As they weaken, our eyebrows can fall. If the heads of your eyebrows fall quicker than the tail, it's always good for business negotiating and raising children, but it can give someone a very stern look. If the tails of your eyebrows fall quicker than the heads, that's called lateral hooding, and that can give you a tired look. That can give then the appearance of a lot of excess tissue in the upper eyelid. Uh, as the gravitational descent continues, we usually will see a deepening of a patient's tear trough and an accentuation of a fat pad that your eyeball sits on, and that causes the bags under the eyes. But many patients have an additional feature uh, that are called malar festoons. Many people have puffiness right over and around their cheekbone area, and that puffiness sits below their actual eyelid. And so we've really spent uh, the better part of 25 years perfecting our procedures for malar festoons that we'll talk about uh, as well. So if a patient comes to see us and their eyebrows are sitting in a normal position, then they're a candidate for an operation called an eyelid lift or a blepharoplasty. But if your eyebrows sit low, if all I do is remove some of the tissue in your eyelids when I sew you up, we actually pull the eyebrows down lower. And that can make a patient look really angry or really tired. So most commonly for patients at the same time, many times when patients come in thinking that they just need eyelid uh, surgery, they would also benefit from having their forehead lifted as well. We now have uh, spent a lot of years researching and perfecting a procedure called the endoscopic brow lift. We do this now through a little one inch incision behind the hairline so no one sees it and the immediate uh, response from many patients with thinning hair is they think, well my hair is already thin there, will people notice that? And in, in almost 30 years I've, I've never had a patient say, oh, well I, I would have never done this again because of my overly visible scar. It's hidden between your hair follicles. We don't shave your hair at all. We split the hair follicle. So through that little incision, a little TV camera smaller than my pen goes into that incision. And then a laser divides the muscular connection holding the eyebrow in place underneath the skin. And that lets me lift up the brow as a unit. Usually we like to see the head of a female brow sitting on the bony eye socket and the tail sitting a centimeter above. For men, we like the brows positioned on the bony uh, eye, eye socket. Uh, and again, we do this in a very natural way so that you never uh, uh, have a surprised look uh, or that they are elevated too high. In the majority of cases then, after I raise the eyebrows, then I look and I see how much extra skin is there in the upper eyelid. And there's an instrument that I have that tests that. It's called a pinch test. And that shows me how much skin I can safely remove uh, so, so you can still close your eyes. At the end of the day, you still have to be able to close your eyes. If you have eye bags, then we use the laser. The beauty of this procedure is that I can use the laser from the inside of your eyelid to sculpt out that fat without making any cuts uh, on the skin. When you wake up from this, you'll have a head dressing on. Uh, that comes off uh, in the morning. The stitches in the upper eyelid, those come out on the seventh day. The stitches uh, behind your hairline, those come out on the tenth day. Uh, the majority of patients uh, are really ready to be back to normal action within uh, a week, ten days at the most. We know it takes a full year for any of these procedures, for all of the subtle swelling uh, to dissipate. So the combination of forehead lifting and upper and lower eyelid surgery be the most common combination that we do uh, for the upper third of your face. Again, if your eyebrows sit in a, in a uh, new, what we call a neutral position where you're not looking tired, uh, then a uh, patient can be a candidate for eyelid surgery alone, although that is, that is much rarer that we, we do that uh, without uh, the eyebrow lift. So uh, my patient coordinators uh, look forward to discussing with you the possibilities for rejuvenating the upper third uh, of your face and we look forward to helping you look your natural best uh, as you embark upon this journey.